So we're here on East-West Highway in Bethesda. The building is home to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, a federal regulatory agency that is charged with protecting the public from unreasonable risks of serious injury or death from thousands of types of consumer products. Typically, these are products that pose a fire, electrical, chemical, or mechanical hazard or can injure children. Hey, Nikki. Hi, good to see you. Thank you for letting us visit, bring our cameras in so we can learn more about CPSC. We're glad to have you. Well, we really appreciate it. And just so our viewers know, we're visiting during the 2010 holiday toy season, but we're going to learn about programs that are in effect all year long and actually some new initiatives that are coming up. Yes. Glad that you could be here. The Consumer Product Safety Commission was established in 1972, and it's led by a five-person commission. And they are appointed to seven-year terms by the President of the United States. Uh, we have about 510 employees here at the Commission, so we're a relatively small agency. But you really have a big mission here. We do. Yes, the Commission is a small agency, but we do a lot with a little budget. We have about a $118 million budget, 510 employees nationwide. The majority are here at headquarters, but we do have about 100 investigators and uh, field operators uh, across the country as well. Wow. And how many like, product categories of, of things do you investigate? The Commission's mission is to protect consumers from the unreasonable risk of injury or death associated with over 15,000 consumer products. So again, large responsibility for a relatively small agency. Right. There's a lot of products on the market. A lot of products. And some of the products that we have jurisdiction over include just about all the products you find in and around your home. So that would be products such as your toys, your furniture, your appliances um, are all under the CPSC's jurisdiction. One of the things we're most famous for is product recalls, and people probably associate, associate product recalls with the Consumer Product Safety Commission. In addition, we also have um, jurisdiction over creating standards, enforcement of regulations, creating uh, product information for consumers. Public education is also a large part of what we do, and also educating manufacturers to make sure that they are aware of the standards that they must meet before products go out on store shelves. Some of the programs we have are a program called Neighborhood Safety Network, which is a grassroots project to get information directly in the hands of consumers. Um, and we can do that by direct email notification and send out posters and other materials to businesses where they can post materials um, and th that consumers can see on our various safety topics. Some of the topics also include things like Pool Safely. We have a new website called PoolSafely.gov. Um, we have a new minority outreach campaign. A new and expectant parents program called Safe Sleep, which is uh, based on educating new and expectant parents about what to expect w when placing your baby to sleep, making sure you do it in a safe environment as well. If you can fit more than two fingers between the mattress and the crib side, your crib is unsafe. We produce press information such as press releases, safety alerts, uh, neighborhood safety network posters which go out to businesses and, and other places where they can print out information directly and get it directly. We also produce videos um, such as CPSC on Safety where we'll put that out on YouTube so that consumers can uh, take advantage of social media outlets that are available to them as well. In fact, let me show you where we produce some of these safety videos and also where our hearings and, uh, take place in our hearing room okay. as well. Great. So when the commissioners hold a hearing, this is the room? This is the room that we host our hearings, public meetings, and also host press conferences here as well. So Nikki, is there a way consumers can follow what happens at a hearing? Yes, the hearings are public, so consumers can actually come to a lot of the hearings as long as they check out our website to make sure they're open to the public. In addition, they're also webcast, so you can be at home and actually click um, at cpsc.gov and, and see a hearing uh, going on live as well. That we believe will be more protected of infants when a caregiver uses these products. So I promised you to see the studio so we can go look at the studio where the public service announcements are made. And also being holiday toy time of year, I've put out some products that have been recalled recently for this holiday season as well. We can talk about those. Okay, great. CPSC has had 44 toy recalls this holiday season over the year 2010. Um, the majority of the injuries and deaths were from la the injuries were from lacerations, cuts, and contusions. The majority of the deaths were actually from riding toys. Um, so here's a variety of the types of products um, and the hazards associated with them that we can walk through. Okay, great. Here we have a horse, and the problem here is that the bridle 
is too large and a young child can actually fit his head inside of that and it can become a strangulation hazard. So here we have an example of the strangulation hazard. The product was also sold here. It's called Horse on a Stick um, with the, the individual unit as well. So we have the rocking horse as well as the horse on the stick. Right, so you're actually worried about injuries and deaths, both. Correct. We do collect statistics. We are connected to hospital emergency rooms across the country, and we also uh, collect reports from coroners across the country. So we do look specifically at injuries and deaths and want to know how to tell consumers what to look out for. So again, you want to be aware of small parts and choking. Here's a good example of that for young kids. We know that they like to put everything in their mouths. And these uh, edge you shape connector pieces can break off completely. A young child can put that in their mouth and that can become a choking hazard which can be serious and in fact um, one of the leading cause of toy related deaths as well. In addition, this is a product that had several million units, in fact seven million units were sold. So this is a product that consumers definitely want to check and make sure you don't have this product. The hazard is here with the plastic key. And the problem is that kids were sitting on the, the product and actually sitting here on the product and getting injured. As a parent, you wouldn't immediately notice this product is dangerous. Correct. So it's important to keep um, in touch with the Consumer Product Safety Commission, and we ask you to do that on our website to, to get direct email notifications so you can be aware of exactly what has been recalled. But again, large quantity here. We want everyone to just check and make sure you don't have this product. If we have one of these products, what do we do? How do we respond to a recall? Right. The Consumer Product Safety Commission works with manufacturers to either uh, choose a remedy, a refund, or a replacement. So in this case, consumers would uh, go directly to the company, in this case Fisher Price, to get a, a free new replacement key um, that is rounded and flat and doesn't protrude like this one does that can injure children. Okay. And do you have voluntary recalls as well as mandatory ones where you work with manufacturers? The majority of our recalls are done voluntarily uh, with, with the manufacturers that we work with. Mm -hmm. So when consumers find a problem with a product, do they call the manufacturer first or do they call CPSC or a lawyer? What, what should they do? So a con consumer can either contact the manufacturer and then in turn the manufacturer is required by law to let the commission know and in, in fact report to the commission um, if it creates a, um, a substantial product hazard. In addition, we do have a toll-free hotline where consumers can come directly to the CPSC and let us know if you've had a problem with a product or perhaps your child has been injured. Definitely want to let us know. Uh, you can also do that um, on our website as well. Well, this magnetic toy looks like fun. Yes, the hazard here is that the magnet can actually separate um, and a young child, again, can place that in their mouths. Um, again, this represents a very serious hazard. Uh, magnets, if ingested, multiple magnets, um, can reattach within the intestines, create blockages. So serious injury, even death associated with magnets. So that's one toy you definitely want to be aware of as well. And these toys look like they're for young children as well? Yes, these are uh, for some of the younger infants. In fact, this is an inflatable toy for, for young children. And here, this whole plastic piece completely detaches and again represents a choking hazard and in fact here on this stuffed stackable toy the, there's a cushion inside that can actually be exposed and again uh, children can, can choke if those pieces are in their mouths as well. Now I notice for older children you have a pogo stick out here. Yes, the pogo stick has aluminum rivets that can break, um, allowing the uh, piece in the middle to break and, and can cause a laceration to the consumer who may be using the product. Now I read on your press release that this product is made in China. Correct. This product was made in China, and uh, one of the things consumers should be aware of, regardless of where a product is manufactured, it is required by law, if sold in the United States, that it has to meet U.S. regulations. So if made in China or Mexico? Correct. Regardless of the place of origin, has to meet uh, current standards and regulations for the commission. So I also read that this pogo stick was sold in the Sports Authority right here in Montgomery County. So if a consumer needs to return it and get their money back, do they have to find their receipt? In this particular case, Sports Authority is giving consumers a refund. So in this case, no, Sports Authority, we negotiated the recall directly with the uh, retailer in this case, so consumers would get a refund without a receipt. Great. Well, I do have a few more questions. You know what? We should probably get comfortable. Let's, let's change the set out and take a seat. Sounds good.
So we've seen a lot of toys. What other types of products do you handle, and are there some products you don't handle? Yes, um, as I had said earlier, we handle all products found in and around the home. So that would include um, things like uh, appliances and furniture and paint, um, uh, toys, um, as well as cribs, uh, nursery products, um, electrical products, and um, a lot of appliances as well. Um, some of the things we don't handle would be food and drugs, so that would obviously be under the jurisdiction of FDA, but in addition we also don't do automobiles, which is under the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's jurisdiction as well. So recalling a product may cause lots of damages to merchants and thousands of dollars. What kind of research goes into a recall before one happens? Well, safety is CPSC's number one priority. However, we would never want a recall to bankrupt because the remedy is important for consumers. We want to make sure that there's a remedy on the other side. So again, we do negotiate with the firms that are recalling the product to either repair, refund, or replacement. So how do you test these products? Do you hire a group of two-year-olds to come in and play with them? We do have in-house engineers and technical staff here at the Commission. In fact, they're physically located at our laboratories in Gaithersburg, Maryland. And we've been in those facilities since 1975, actually. Um, and that's right there off of Darnstown Road in uh, Gaithersburg, Maryland. But we are excited to announce that we will be moving soon. We're in the process of building our new laboratories, which will be in Rockville, Maryland, on, off of Research Place. Uh, so we'll be moving in March of 2011 to our new facility. And the new facility is over two and a half times larger than our existing testing space. So this will be much needed space that will enhance our capabilities um, of system testing um, as, as well as capabilities of actually doing various testing on products such as all-terrain vehicles, um, fire, fire standards and testing for mattresses and flammability issues, as well as an enhanced chemical uh, lab where we can do testing on things like lead, phthalates, um, and other um, uh, chemicals as well. Well, it's very comforting. It's hard for an average consumer to know what's safe and what isn't safe. Correct. Um, we're also, the new facility will in, give us the ability to have an additional um, staff there, so we'll now have about 100 staff at that location in Rockville. So what's the best way for consumers to get information about products that are recalled? One of the best ways is to get direct email notification. If you go to cpsc.gov, we have a yellow box there that says sign up here. So if you give us your email address, and we will send you direct notification at the time of recall. This is the way that we communicate with media and other um, businesses as well. So now consumers can be empowered to get direct email notification. So you don't have to be concerned that you may have missed a recall announcement or didn't hear about a recall. And I understand you're going to be launching a new website soon. Correct. We actually will be uh, launching saferproducts.gov in March of 2011. Um, this new database will be a place where consumers can actually post information and also search information. So it will be uh, available for consumers. Also businesses can respond to information. And this kind of creates a more of access and of, of public information to consumers so they can use that as more accessibility to information. And are there any new initiatives that you're working on? Yes, we, we launched some new public information and education campaigns this year, um, Safe Sleep being one of them. And again, that was to educate new and expectant parents about the hazards associated with cribs. And this is in light of having over 11 million recalls of cribs. Um, there's also regulations going on right now, the standards associated with drop side cribs. Um, you may have heard about that as well. Um, so we've also created a safety video to explain exactly what a consumer should do, not placing soft bedding, for instance, in a crib that can cause suffocation, making sure you place your baby on its back at all times. Never place your baby to sleep on top of pillows or comforters. Remove these items from the crib. And the second initiative we've launched is a minority outreach program targeted at African American, Hispanic, American Indian, and Asian populations, trying to target information, creating videos, and creating materials um, aimed at these audiences uh, to make sure that they're receiving the same safety information that we, we put out uh, annually. Well, that's great information. So just one more time, how does a consumer file a complaint with CPSC? They can call us toll-free, 1-800-638-2772, or file uh, electronically at cpsc.gov. Well, Nikki, thank you for all that great information and for the grand tour of your headquarters here in Bethesda, Maryland. Thanks for coming. We appreciate having you. Thank you so much. And that's it for another episode of Consumer Confidence.